Hello, hello, and welcome to PD in your PJs. I'm Julie from Seesaw. I'm so excited to be here with you. And, and most importantly, I'm just honored that you would take time out of your busy school week and work week to join us to talk about Seesaw. In this case, you can see the kind of squiggly QR code pictured at the bottom of the screen. We're really talking about printing QR codes to create really digital and interactive hallway displays. And I can't wait to demo that for you in real time tonight. First, more of an introduction. I'm Julie. I was a high school ELA teacher for 18 years. I'm now on the teacher community team at Seesaw. I'd love if you could find me on Twitter. I'm at edtechjuliej. Give me a follow. I share lots of great tips and resources. And of course, you can connect with our whole team on Twitter at Seesaw. Now, I do want to tell you that this particular training is talking just about creating those QR code interactive hallway and bulletin board displays. We're not really talking about how to get started with students or how to set up a class. So if you are in need of that kind of information, make sure you've watched the brand new to Seesaw training webinar for your grade level. I included a link there. Um, you can't click on anything now as you're watching, but the slides are coming your way. You're getting that in an email shortly after we conclude the presentation. So you'll get the recording of what I'm saying right now, you'll also get the slides and then you'll get a certificate to document that you were here with us. So I definitely recommend those brand new to Seesaw training videos if you need one of those to get started. Okay, so here's our plan for tonight. I have a few things I wanna show you. I'm, I'm not gonna show you too many slides. I'm actually gonna demo most of it in real time, showing you what it looks like inside a real Seesaw class. So I hope that's helpful for you. But first we'll take a couple of minutes and talk about folders because that's really the first step. If you're going to create a, a hallway display, you want to organize everything together in the same place using a Seesaw folder. Then we'll talk about how to print those QR codes and what you can do with them once you've printed them. I'll demo that for you live. And then this is going to be, I think, my favorite part. I'm going to show you lots of displays that people in our community have shared. Um, they share with us on social media, and I want to share some of those with you to maybe inspire you to think of ways that you can create your own display. We will save a few minutes for questions at the end, and then we have another webinar coming up tonight too, so I won't be able to stay on too long, but I'm happy Happy to answer as many questions as I can before we wrap up. Okay, so let's briefly talk about folders because I think that's a good skill to have before you think about starting to create a hallway display or a bulletin board display. And of course, this is a great time of year to do it. If you're having parents and family members visit you for like conferences, this is a great time to show a little bit of the seesaw work um, like on a bulletin board or in the hallway. But I think the first skill you need is to use folders. And I wanna give you a few tips about folders. If you haven't used them already, I wanna remind you that you find folders in your class settings. And you find class settings by clicking the wrench in the upper right. So if you're logged in as a teacher in your class, you're looking for that wrench or depending on what part of the word world you live in, you might call that a spanner. You're looking for the wrench or spanner and you're gonna click that. And you have a lot of choices to make once you click that. That's where your class settings are. And you see everything from like, um, you know, what's your sign in mode and all those other decisions you make when you set up your class. But I wanna talk to you about folders and that kind of, you have to kind of scroll down a ways. Like if I was in a class, I'd be scrolling down, pulling this gray bar to folders. If you click manage folders, kind of where I'm squiggling my mouse right now, you see the list of all the folders you've created. And maybe yours is empty because maybe you haven't created any yet then just go ahead and click that create a folder button to name your folders. You can see you can pick a color for each folder. Um, this is the thing though that I think is the most important in talking about folders. I taught big kids, but I think you can do this with whatever grade you teach. I think you wanna make sure that this option here to show add to folder shows up for both students and teachers. If it's just for teachers, only you, the grown up, is going to be able to tag anything and put it in a folder, which means you'll have to take a little extra time to go back through the journal and find everything you want to tag. I think you want to make sure that your students can do that too. So I would turn this on here. I would click to make sure that it doesn't just say teachers, but that it says students and teachers, because this is gonna be really helpful as you're thinking about creating a display. You wanna put every 
everything together in the same folder that will be part of your bulletin board or your hallway display. Um, when you see your list of folders here, what you can see is that I've used some emojis here just to remind me to tell you, you can use emojis in your folder name. That's uh, helpful for pre-readers or emerging readers. Um, and I have one other trick about the naming of the folders that I'll tell you too. There's a link here if you haven't gotten started with folders. You, later you can click that and learn even more about how to use folders. Okay, so we talked about this. Make sure your class is set so that students can add items too. In my classroom, when I was using Seesaw with big kids, my students knew it was just sort of part of our norms that every item they added to Seesaw had to go in at least one folder. In this case, I do want to tell you, if you're creating a hallway display, like let's say your students have done book talks and you want everyone's book talk to be part of this display that you hang out in your hallway, make that folder called book talks, let's say, or you could even call it a hallway display. But a little trick I want to tell you is that if you put like a period in front of the name of the folder, that's going to bump it to the top, like alphabetically. So if you're working with young students or even if you just have a long list of folders as I know I did when I was teaching big kids if you want that folder to be right at the top so nobody has to scroll too hard to find it um, put a period there you can always edit out the period later but if you want it to show up on top add some punctuation there so what it would look like is like I mean, this is alphabetized anyway, but you could add a period here and that's gonna keep it to the top automatically because of that punctuation. So anything you want to be at the top, which is convenient and easy for your students, if your students are allowed to add to folders, use that punctuation. I think that's a really cool tip. I learned it from my colleague, Angela. Angela. Um, okay, so another thing to talk about too, as it pertains to a hallway display, if it's relevant as far as what you want to share and show and put in your hallway, um, let students kind of decide what is their best work. Now, I was using the example of book talks a minute ago, and if everybody did one, then of course they're all gonna get printed and displayed. But if you want students to pick their own best item, like if the theme of your bulletin board or display was, my best work or my wow work. This is a good opportunity to, you know, encourage students to be reflective and to empower them to pick what that item is. So I included some resources here. We have a lot um, on our webpage. So I included some wow work resources in case that's terminology you want to use or you want to teach your students about that. We have a video on some other things there. So you can click on that later as well. Okay, I wanna just show you these things. I'm gonna demo this for you live, but because we know that these slides are coming your way and we want you to have them as resources, especially if you end up sharing them with some of your teacher friends, I wanted to make sure I typed out a few things here for you. Okay, when you're thinking about the hallway display, it's really gonna be made up of these QR codes that you print. So every single thing in Seesaw, every student post, anything in the journal can have a QR code and you just need to know how to get them and how to print them. So I wanna tell you a couple of different ways. Um, you can get this kind of QR code that has the kind of little image of the item in the middle. You can get that on the web. You go to those three dots at the bottom of any post and then you click get item QR code. So if it's important to you for your display that a little sneak peek or preview of the item shows up in the middle of the code, you wanna do it this way. On the web, three dots, get item QR code. And that's what's gonna generate the kind with the little image in the middle. I actually like that because to me, QR codes all look the same. And if you have a big stack of them on your desk, for example, you can't even remember which one goes with which thing. So it's always easier if you can see a little sneak peek. So I like doing it this way. I'm gonna demo that for you live in a minute. I just wanted to remind you and give you this slide as a resource. On the web, three dots, get item QR code, and that's what generates that little preview. If you like the PDF print that looks just like a full sheet of paper that has kind of a picture of the item with a small QR code at the bottom, you can do that on the web or on iOS, three dots print. Okay, so three dots and print. You're always going to those three dots to get the QR code, but this is gonna give you that kind of eight and a half by 11 page, which is a little bit different than this option. And I'm gonna show you some pictures from our community where you can see displays made up of both types of items. Okay, let me show you a demo real quick though, because I think this will be the part that's the most helpful for you. I'm gonna go into a live Seesaw class 
So you can see that I'm in a demonstration class. We use these for lots of PD. Um, so this is the kind of thing that we um, have grown-ups posting and we use it for professional development. So what you're seeing here is just samples of work that we use for other trainings like this one. Okay, so I'm on the web. So I have the option of clicking the three dots and I can print the PDF that full page with the QR code, or I can do get item QR code. And I wanna show you a couple of different things here, and then I'll switch to my iPad and kind of uh, be training you from there so you can see what it looks like on that different device. But let's go ahead and click get item QR code. And this is the one that's gonna give me that little picture in the middle. Okay, so it's just gonna work on my computer. It's gonna generate this code. I could probably click print on my computer if I was hooked up to a printer, or what I wanna show you how to do in case you don't, haven't thought about this option. I can always save this QR code and paste it into something else. So like I'm on a Mac and I'm gonna click, uh, I right clicked and then I'm gonna click save image as, and I'm just gonna put demo so I know what it is. And I'm gonna save it to my desktop. I'm just gonna save to my computer. But what I wanna show you about that is that maybe as part of your planning for your display, maybe you just want to open up a document and just paste some of those codes in. I just named that one demo. It's gonna show up kind of big. Maybe I wanna make it a little smaller. You can paste these QR codes into something else if that's helpful. I could have done that in slides. Whatever, um, whatever application or digital tool you would normally use to put some things in to print. Um, I mean, I would normally use a Google Doc. You can just paste that right in. So remember that once Seesaw generates the code, you can do a lot of things with it. You could take a screenshot, you could crop it, you could paste it into something else like I just did. So just depending on how well you know your device and how if you know how to do those things, you can... Excuse me, I muted myself just to clear my throat. Um, you can right click and save that and put it or paste it into something else like I just kind of demoed for you there. So that's when you click the three dots and then the get item QR code. And I could even screenshot it from here if I wanted to. And you may have to actually manually cut and paste some things. Um, and then, you know, you just have a lot of different options based on what Seesaw is generating. So again, that's three dots get item QR code and get item QR code is the one that has that picture in the middle. Okay, if I had clicked print though, it works in a really similar fashion, but what it's doing is it's generating that paper that's like the eight and a half by 11 size. It's just processing for a minute. You can see it's thinking about it on my computer, but then it's gonna generate that full page that then I can click print and it's gonna print as a PDF. I'm gonna show you a couple other really cool things before I switch to my iPad. Okay, so I can save that or I can just go ahead and click print. I'm not hooked up to a printer currently, but if I was, my print button would be there and I could just print it right away. Remember, if I went ahead and printed all of these or anything like this, I could still manually with scissors cut this out and glue it on anything. If I hung student artwork in my hallway and I wanted the artwork on display because it was like three dimensional and colorful and I wanted it to be displayed in my hallway, I could still cut this out and glue it on the back of something. And I know in my classroom, I was cutting out a lot of QR codes like this to glue on books, like uh, for book trailers, book reviews type things. So you can always cut out these QR codes. You just have to know how to print them in order to do that. So we've talked about a couple of things. You can paste them into another document for later use or printing. You could cut them right out um, and glue them onto something that's really helpful. Just wanted to make sure you knew how to do that. I'm gonna show you one more quick thing before I switch over to my iPad. Um, this is the, the reason why I was talking so much at the beginning about folders. Uh, making sure all of the things you want for your hallway display are in one folder is gonna be super helpful to you because when you click on these folders, and so I'm in my class, I'm gonna click on a folder, you can print the whole folder at once. So if, you're, if you made the name of your folder hallway display and made sure everything that you wanted for your display was in that folder, with one click, and I'm on the web here, I've, I'm in my folder, I'm on the web, I'm clicking print PDF, it's not only gonna print me one PDF for one kid's item, it's gonna print everything from that folder, which would probably be something from every student in my class. So it's generating that on my computer. I'm on my MacBook. It's gonna look very similar, but instead of just one page, it's gonna be like 11 pages. It's gonna show me all of my students' PDFs. And I can create a display 
just from that, just from clicking print, hanging them on a bulletin board. It's just a really quick, easy way to do it. Seesaw's doing all the hard work generating the codes. Okay, so you can see that this is actually really helpful too. It prints kind of this cover page for you to remind you this is the name of the class, this is the name of the folder that's um, helpful for your organization. And then here's everything in that folder. And so that's really gonna be convenient for you. If you have student artwork on display in your hallway, you can just make your folder name, whatever the name of that project was, and then print all of these at once. So I just wanted to make sure you knew how to do that. Let me toggle over really quickly though to my iPad. Okay, so this is what my iPad looks like. I'm connected to my computer. So I wanted to just show you if you're on iOS, what that looks like. I'm in the same demo class. This is the same demo class I was showing you click those three dots and then when I'm on iOS I'm not on my computer I'm on my iPad now I can click print I don't have that one that says get I just have the one that says print but it's going to generate that QR code page in basically the exact same way I just want to show you how that looks just slightly different when I'm on my iPad so it's downloading the, the PDF just like it did on my computer but I'm just going to show you how if I'm on my iPad I have this little share button up here. I'll, I'll show you it with my mouse. You see that little share button? You kind of, look, that maybe looks familiar to you from a phone or a tablet. Um, it's going to give me the option of putting that QR code in some other places on my iPad. I would maybe put it in my Google Drive, let's say, or maybe I would email it to someone or to myself for printing. I know in my classroom, my iPad was not hooked up to a printer. So if I had generated this code on my iPad, I would have needed to send it somewhere for printing. And that would have maybe been how I would have done that. I would have put that in my Google Drive or maybe emailed it to myself. I just wanted to show you some options. You're always looking for those three dots, whether you're on iOS or the web, you're always getting your QR codes from the three dots. So you know how to make your folders, you know how to print an entire folder, and you know how to print one QR code at a time from either iOS or the web. So you have lots of different options there. Okay, so now this is the best part, I think. I'm gonna show you a lot of really great examples that have been shared with us, mostly on Twitter, some on Facebook, um, things that teachers have created that I just think should probably be exciting and inspiring for you. So I wanted to make sure to show you. Now, I do wanna tell you when you get these slides, be sure to look in the slide notes underneath the slides, cause I've put the name of the person who shared it. So I'm giving them credit for it being their display. I've given you their Twitter handle in case you wanna reach out to them if you have questions about how they did it. And if they used a different app or tool that I thought would be helpful for you, I type that in the notes as well. Okay, so here's a reminder. The people that I'm gonna show you next used get item QR code, get item QR code. Cause all the displays I'm gonna show you right now are gonna be the ones that have that little image sneak peek in the middle. So we know that they did it by clicking get item QR code. Here's a good example. You can see this is the get item QR code because we see the sneak peek. I bet that helped the teacher remember whose was whose. And then the students have added their own names here. So you kind of know which kid is which. You can still scan the QR code um, you see the sneak peek of which kid it is. And you know, here's the great thing. I mean, I think this is the point about why you would want a hallway or bulletin board display of QR codes. It's because, um, you know, you're seeing something, you're, you're able to hear voice um, and see video. So you can see movement and hear voice. Um, you're not just seeing a two dimensional item. You're, you're getting that extra step of the student voice. So that's why it's worth it to print the QR code. I think, you know, if it was something that was a two dimensional item with no voice at all, maybe it wouldn't be worth printing the QR code. But I think why it is worth sharing a lot of our students work this way is because you get the benefit of hearing their voice. Um, here's another example. And you can see in, in this case, Okay, so we know that these people use the get item QR code. This person looked like they had a black and white printer. They added color by having students draw or write their names. In this example, the um, the teacher who's using a color printer here looks really cool because they have it on a you know a print fabric background on the bulletin board. They've printed just the Seesaw logo there, so you get a little more context, but that's really an inviting, nice bulletin board display. I'm sure parents and family members liked it. And then as the parents and family members come in, they can use their own tablets or devices uh, their phones, maybe even to scan the QR code in another QR reader or write in Seesaw, they can scan. And I'll, I'll demo that for you in a minute too, because I, I don't 
think I mentioned where to find the scan button in case you don't know. You can scan these codes right within Seesaw to hear those student voices come right to life. I did put the name of the app that this teacher used um, in the slide notes, but what the students did is they created an emoji of themselves. It's an app called Emoji Me, and then they made it talk in Chatterpix. So it's kind of an app smash, and if that's something your students are familiar with, that might seem like a fun activity. So you actually see the creation here. This is the actual artwork, but the QR code you can see has been actually manu manually cut out and taped onto the board. So you're getting to see the student's creation, and then you would scan the code to hear it start talking. So that's kind of a cool idea. I thought that was neat. And then you see something similar here too, perhaps using the same app. You see the teacher's Bitmoji here, and the student's probably using the app Emoji Me. She's cut and pasted and added the student's name here. And then if you scan the code, you hear the student's voices. I also wanted to make sure you knew where you could get this printable because that was a nice addition to the hallway display. It's the We Seesaw printable. So I gave you that info in the slide notes as well. This is a good example. Um, you know, so here we see some things on a bulletin board. This is literally just taped in the hallway right outside the classroom. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, this is one of my favorites from last school year, but I wanted to make sure I showed it to you tonight um, because there are some actual tangible three-dimensional items taped out here on this display as well. So this has to do with sound, um, uh, the instruments and items that produce different types of sound. And you can see some of these creations are actually taped to the wall. You have lots of resources here that people can look at and peruse. And then of course the Seesaw QR codes here, no color printer needed, just printed in black and white. But then when those parents and family members scan those codes, they're gonna hear some of that music come to life. And that's a really cool display of, with um, a lot of different parts and elements. So very inviting and engaging for the people who are looking for it. And this also came during the time of the Winter Olympics, so it was very thematic or seasonal. I thought this was kind of a cool way to incorporate the Seesaw QR codes right within um, the, the other decorations made for the board. So then people were scanning the codes that were taped to the medals. Um, I thought that was really neat too and thought it might give you some good ideas. And here's another one that could be used anytime during the year. You could change out the QR codes, kind of look and see what we're doing right now in our class you could leave your kind of overall heading here and then rotate out your codes as necessary. Okay, I also wanted to show you some of these because I think this is the easiest and quickest way to do a display. Just print the entire folder, do the print button, and you don't have to cut anything out and glue anything anywhere. You're just like stapling them up to your board. So the difference between cutting out the codes with a little sneak peek in the middle versus just printing, hitting the print button button and printing that whole full page PDF. So here, these are the full page PDFs, no cutting and gluing. Um, this teacher, Tracy, had added some of the other Seesaw icons and logos here, but these are just those, uh, you know, you could print one time, click print the whole folder, and then all of the students print out. So going to print there. And I think this is really neat too, kind of um, capitalizing on the Incredibles theme. This year was incredible and these are um, just the full folder printed here. So every student has one page or one page in the PDF. Um, and kind of a similar idea to the one I showed you a minute ago, you could rotate all of these out. So you could leave up what is happening, but you could change. You could even see these are like um, in those slicks and you could pull out um, these and rotate them in and out. And so you could show different work at different times of the year. So that's kind of cool too, making something that um, different codes can be swapped in and out. Um, I wanted to, before we wrap up, and I'm gonna show you that one other thing about where to hit the scan button, but I wanted to remind you that anytime you're creating something like this, if you get stuck or you have any questions, the best place to go is the Help Center. Um, we have a support team who can get back to you really fast. So go there, you can ask a question here, or you can search here or you can even interact with our Seesaw Assistant here. So you have three different places to get help. Just remember, we have a pretty robust help center. So don't forget to start there if you have questions or if you get stuck, it's help.seesaw.me. I'll pop back into that class just to remind you, this is for you and your students or your parents and family members who are visiting. When you click that profile icon and look at the bottom is where you see that scan button. Okay, so if you're walking around with a smartphone or a tablet, you, to scan the co code, you're clicking profile icon and then looking for that 
scan button. So that's what people would need to do if they were in your hallway, for example, walking through your display, they would need to scan the code. And they can do that in any uh, app, but any QR scanning app, but if they're in Seesaw and they already have Seesaw open, like on their phone, that's a perfect place to scan the code. Okay, so I do wanna ask you if you can to take a minute or two to give us some feedback on the survey. That's gonna pop up as soon as we wrap up tonight. And I wanna take a few minutes for questions. I'll leave this on the screen here so you can see some places where you can contact us for help. But let me see what's in the question box because I've been talking a long time and I haven't peeked in there to see what's there. Let me see what I can help you with before we wrap up. And remember, this is where you can find us if I don't get to your question tonight. Okay, so bear with me as I scan through here. Okay, hi Karen. Karen's asking if you can change the middle of the image to a student picture. Um, you know, that's just generated automatically through Seesaw and it's going to be an image that is like a still image from that post. So if you want the middle image to be of the student, then the student needs to be visible, like in that video, for example. And you could see an example of that a few slides back um, where uh, the kids wrote their names at the top. So it's not, you can't like change it manually. Although I suppose if you wanted to invest some time, you could cut and paste manually with scissors and a glue stick, a kid's picture onto a code. I just like putting the the picture of the item in the middle because at least you can kind of match what code goes with that what I get what you're saying there but um, the students picture is only going to show up if that is part of their post um, yeah um, Debbie's asking if this can be done from an iPad or an iPhone like I demoed for you from the iPad for a minute there so yes you can do all of these steps from an iPad too Hi, Renee. Um, Renee's saying, and I, I don't necessarily disagree if you're talking about a two-dimensional item. She's saying, why would you really need the QR code if the image of the item is already visible on the PDF? I think it's to hear the voice and to get the video to play. So it, it doesn't necessarily make sense for like if a kid colored, you know, something on the drawing screen in Seesaw and it's just a drawing with no voice and there's no video as part of that item. Yeah, I don't necessarily think you need to. I think we're like if a student's doing a book talk or a book review, or maybe they explained their process for their artwork in their own words, it would be worth cutting out that code and gluing it right onto their picture. I think that um, is probably why people do the QR displays is for the voice to add the voice to the item. Okay, so Karen is saying in iOS, can I print the QR code with the image preview? So on iOS, and here I can switch back over in just a second, I can show you what it looks like right from my iPad. Okay, so I'm on my iPad and on iPad, I have the option for the PDF. So I don't have that get item QR code option showing up there, I just have that print option. Um, so if you log in on the web, so you can see this is my iPad, it says print. So I'm getting that full PDF. If I'm on my um, on the web, though, that's where I get um, get item QR code. Good question, though. Just going to leave this back up here. OK, still taking a look at these um, questions. Um, hi, Debbie. You can use this this uh, QR code reader in Seesaw, or if you already have another QR reader on your phone or tablet, you could use that too. So like if you have parents or guests or visitors and they already have a QR reader app, they can scan it with that. But like your kiddos at school, if they are perusing a display and they already have Seesaw, it's just easier to just have them scan it right in Seesaw. That's how I always did it when I was working with younger students. You know, everybody is already using Seesaw on an iPad, so they might as well scan with that. But if you have visitors or other stakeholders who have access to other QR apps, it works the same way as well. Hi, Sandy. So Sandy's asking a good question. She's saying if the connected family members are already seeing everything coming in Seesaw, then what would be the point of the display? Um, so that's a good problem to have. If you already have everybody connected, then that would be a good problem to have. If you don't have everybody connected and you know you have visitors or parents coming in that aren't seeing things in Seesaw, then they would be getting to see it for the first time. I think the thing, though, is um, you know, a parent is only seeing their own students work, but if you have something that everyone has done, like a piece of art or a book talk, and you think it is worth sharing with like the family members that would be visiting your classroom and you want to have one item for every student, that would be a great opportunity for a parent to get to see some other things that they don't normally see. But that's a good question. 
Kelly, great question. Kelly's saying, okay, so these QR codes that we see in these pictures, is it going to that one at one post or is it going to the entire account? It's not going to the account. They're not connecting to the account. It's literally just going to that one item. So they're hearing that recording or seeing that video associated with that one item. I'm kind of keeping an eye on the time here because I have another webinar starting soon, but I can see I have a few questions waiting. So I'm gonna see what I can get through here. Um, Okay, Joy, great question. Can guests still see the work if they have a student, uh, they don't have a Seesaw account? Yes, um, you don't have to have a Seesaw account. You don't have to have already be logged into Seesaw for that to work when you're scanning the code. Good question though. Hi, Shakira. Shakira is saying like, if you were rotating those um, items in and out on your bulletin board, would you have to create a new folder? I mean, I probably would just for easier organization. I would probably have one folder named whatever is convenient for you for each like display that you're creating. Um, but it would just be your preference as far as what's convenient for you for your workflow. Um, Maureen is asking a good question. I She wants to know if administrators can join as a family member. I mean, I think you could probably add an administrator as a co-teacher as conveniently as you could have them as a family member, but I oftentimes had um, uh, administrators serving as a family member for a student who wasn't connected. Um, so a stakeholder can play that role as well. So yeah, whatever makes sense for you um, as part of your process, I think makes sense. Um, Maureen, the certificates automatically come in your email. You always get a certificate for any webinar that you register for. So that's coming to you in just a couple of hours. You'll get the recording of this presentation and the slides and the certificate. Okay, so Anne Marie is asking, um, she's saying that these displays, this type of display would be a good way to get some other teachers on board with CESA in your school. Um, any QR scanner will work, Anne Marie, but I think if you're trying to get people hooked on CESA, maybe having them set up, or, you know, get the CESA app and set up an account would be a good first step too, but it will work either way. Um, yeah, um, Dana, same type of question. They don't necessarily have to have the Seesaw app to scan the QR code, but they would have to come ready with another QR code app then. I mean, so like if I was having parents come in, I would have like five iPads ready to go with Seesaw already open maybe so that they would have something that they could grab and scan with. It's just something you'd have to think about as far as if people are connected or not or how your visitors would be prepared to scan. You're welcome, Dana. Thanks for your feedback. Just a couple questions left and then we'll wrap it up tonight. Um, Paige, that's a good question. She's asking about the private teacher folder. I'm gonna have you submit that question on our help site. They can give you some better feedback on that. I know we've had that question come up before and I just wanna make sure you get that totally answered totally accurately about if something is in the private folder, how the QR code works. Um, Stephanie, great question. Stephanie's asking what it's look like, looking like from a parent perspective. I'm not logged in as a parent on either of my devices currently, so I'm not going to be able to do that in this demo, but we do have a lot of tutorial videos that are from the perspective of a family member on the family app. So if you look on our help site, you'll be able to find some of those. They're not specific to QR codes, but I think, um, I think that that would be a way you could get a peek inside the family app. Hi, Renee. Um, we update our PD schedules, you know, every month. So we're just a few days um, from the end of our month in November. So that December schedule will be posted soon. Thanks for asking, though. We're excited about some of our December offerings. You are welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for um, thanks for coming tonight. Hey, we had a great crowd tonight and you guys asked some really relevant questions. I love being here with you and I hope you can join us again soon. We have family communication for grades three through five coming up in just a few minutes. So if you wanna look at our schedule and register for that one and pop in, we'd love to have you there too. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope to see you here again soon. Bye-bye.